So tell us about I'm a Celeb. How did that come about? So I, I was a fan of that show. Like, um, again, going back to kind of where I grew up, I was, you know, there wasn't like loads to do. I rode my bike a lot, but really I, I was never that kid that was kind of out like drinking or smoking or anything when I was a teenager. I was quite boring. Um, so one kind of habit I, I had is whenever, well, not habit, like the routine was whenever I'm a celeb was on, I, I would watch it, you know, because I think, I don't know what it was on, how many, the regularity of it in the end, but I think it was like five or six days a week or whatever. <laughs> Same time in the evening, I used to watch that, watch the news, go to sleep. Um, and I did that for 18 years or maybe, sorry, 17 years. And then I was on the 18th year. So my entire real like life, I guess, I think I was wow, 25 when I went on. So yeah, from the age of like six or seven or whatever it was through till when I went on that, you know, every winter that would be it. So that came about because when the vamp started uh, getting more and more successful, I would just carry on watching I'm a Celeb like I'd always done. But like this time around, I would like tweet about it um, and, and whatever. And and then kind of as as the vamps did carry on, there were people that were going in that show that I actually kind of knew. And it was like really weird for me where I was like starting to break through that ceiling of being like, oh, this is almost like my world. Like I know these people. We'd done a few like things with ITV before. Um, and it just, I was like, I might actually have a chance of getting on this show at some point. And then like, yeah, lo and behold that, I think that year or the year after they, um, they, they reached out to my management and said like, oh, James has been tweeting about this show for years. So like, would he be interested? Um, and it was a bit of a weird time. I think the presumption with those sorts of shows is it's like an endeavor to relaunch a career, uh, go in a slightly different uh, career direction or for money. And I was very lucky that n none of those three things were the driving factor of me to do that show. Like, if anything, it was really awkward time <laughs> for me to do it because the Vamps was on a world tour, which I missed a couple of shows for. I was I was very, very satisfied with the Vamps. I didn't want to, you know, I wasn't making any solo music back then in 2018 when I went on the show. It just wasn't, I didn't need to do the show, which actually was quite nice for me because when I came out the other side of it and during it, I didn't, I didn't do any, like, I didn't do much, many interviews really. I didn't, I didn't kind of go down that, uh, again, hate this term, but influencery route. I was very, um, conscious to, to partner with like a few brands that I actually had always liked. I, like the sellout term is something that people throw around a lot. And I, I, I think I'm proud of myself for not doing that. I went straight back to a vamps tour and, no, like here we are kind of thing um i did that show to ch kind of challenge myself mentally um and but mainly for the fact i was a massive fan of that show and how did you find it the experience <clears throat> it was difficult i think again being like such a big fan of the show you kind of paint this picture in your head of of uh how you think it would be and it was just kind of nothing like i thought it would be um in a nice and also like difficult way like the nice aspect was I didn't appreciate how tight and close the bond would be between other campmates. I think, you know, to compare it to the um, relationships with like, with bandmates is, is probably the closest, like, comparison there. Um, it, was, it was crazy how quick you kind of, like, grapple onto a sense of, like, connection with other people. And I think it's because you are so isolated there. And that brings me on to... What I didn't anticipate, which was honestly, it is very remote. Um, there's no kind of special treatment. The food is really minimal, and the boredom is something that that I thought was very what well, that doesn't come across on TV. And I I think if you if you factor in you're awake from about five a.m. through till I guess eleven by the time you've like done your final interviews at the end of the day. It's a long time to be awake, but then you also factor in that if you're not picked for a Bush Dugger trial or a Dingo Dollar challenge, the only kind of thing that happens in your day is, um, well, it was the year we had Holly and Deck, not Ant and Deck, but Holly and Deck would come in in the morning. They would, uh, you'd, they'd announce who's doing the trial that day. <clears throat> then they'd go. So that'd be like a half an hour thing. They'd go. And then if you're not picked for that or the Dinga Dollar Challenge, you do nothing from like maybe, I'm going to guess like 7.38 through till the evening. And that's like, I was in there for three weeks. So that every day with the, with, you know, really hot weather, 
not much water, like the water process was was difficult. And again, I went into that show thinking three weeks of doing nothing, that's amazing. But actually, if you think about your, you're in an environment that's, you don't see a horizon, you barely see the sky because of the canopy. You're in a very small, like your like, premise is very, very small. You factor in, yeah, lack of food and and water. It was actually very, very difficult. Mm. And that that's why now, you know, before when I used to watch that show and people would cry on like the first day you see them or there'd be like arguments, I would be like, come on. But now I understand that you go into that show emotionally quite... You know, you have five days of isolation before going into that show. So you've already been away from home for a week and you've not spoken to anyone from home for like a week. It's quite disorientating. So by the time you get into the camp, you're like a week in. And it's it's tough. It is tough. And I think I I'm I'm really lucky the people I was with because if I was if I was put in there with people and there was tension and loads of bickering, I think I just would have walked out because it's very lucky, as I said, I didn't go into that show for specific reason and i didn't need to do it so i just yeah i was lucky but actually you know i still i still speak to harry radnap nick knowles emily atak because she said she was pregnant the other week i spoke to her about it and we still speak every every so often which is lovely and i think that was quite rare but that show is something yeah i mean six years how long ago yeah six years ago nearly now and I think I'm only just getting to the point in my life where, in a way, it feels like it never happened. <laughs> like, it's, it's a bizarre thing how your mind works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>